What up, y'all? Hanging out. This is Watch Me Eat Tots. <laughs> uh, mixed with hashtag Ask Lauren. I figured I want to eat tots right now. And I was planning on shooting Ask Lauren, so why not just put them together? Mm, this is like my pre-dinner snack. Also have a white wine spritzer. How cliche. Do you ever notice how on shows women are always drinking wine? I've been watching a lot of TV, obviously, given the situation. Women characters always want wine. <laughs> We're wine fiends. Or is that like some patriarchal stereotype or something? I don't really know. I don't really have a commentary on it. Other than I've just noticed that. Uh, this is like this much wine mixed with sparkling water, so it's hardly any wine. Okay, that's enough about wine. These are the tots from Trader Joe's. Dipping them into some jalapeno ranch that I had in my fridge. Yes, homemade. Um, there's a lot of hashtag Ask Lauren's I've never answered in my YouTube comments. That's what I'm looking at right here. So I'll answer some of those. I also put a call out onto Instagram. I just posted it, so it might take a while. Um, okay, there are a few there waiting. Actually, this is funny because I actually answered uh, this person on YouTube. Castle Nanny said, how do you curb eating out of boredom in this time? So, I mean, I'm kind of out of boredom right now. <laughs> but I am hungry. Mm. What I said to her on YouTube was, I am not hungry. <laughs> Something must be happening with age, but I don't eat as much unnecessarily as I used to. It's true. I definitely used to eat way more out of boredom and I don't now. I used to be one of those people that like wanted to eat all the time. And although it looks that way in my content, I actually don't. You're just seeing this like concentrated period where I'm eating usually. Um, I still obviously eat sometimes out of boredom, but I noticed I haven't really been doing it while in self-isolation and I'm just starting to kind of get like carby cravings and it's because I'm getting my period in like a week and that always happens. I always start craving carbs and sugar and alcohol. It's almost like clockwork. And then uh, I also get really irritable. Like it doesn't matter how much exercise or meditation I do, I have the shortest fuse known to humans. It started today actually because there's like all of this noise. There's like the gardening outside, people are lawn mowing. There's a guy beside me that like works on cars illegally at his house and is always making a racket. And I just keep noticing how like irritated with it I'm getting and that's like full on PMS. Long answer short, usually I eat out of boredom when I'm PMSing and that's really it. So I'm sure y'all know what I'm talking about. It drives me insane. Jas Wong, what are some good and bad things about living in LA compared to Toronto? And do you prefer one over the other? I mean, at the moment I prefer LA over Toronto and I've been feeling like that since I got here. It's been about a year and a half. Uh, I think it's just like energetically, there was something about Toronto that was feeling stagnant. And look, I understand that there's an energy to something and it's based on what I'm putting into it. That I believe more so than just like blaming problems on some outside thing. Thing is there was no real problem with living in Toronto. I just wanted to live here. I just had this sort of like bigger desire to wanna to come down here and I didn't really know why other than weather was I just wanted to live somewhere where it was kind of always mild and just experience what it was like to live in a more, I guess it's not even tropical, it's a desert here, but like just something more like this. But I felt like there was also this bigger calling, like some bigger energy calling me to come here without a real particular specific reason. So I don't really know what that is and I'm sure it will reveal itself and I guess it has been revealing itself in small ways. Um, and now with this border closure, closure um, I can go back. Canada will take me back, but there's nowhere to stay. Um, so, plus I'd have to self-quarantine. I don't know, it's just way easier to stay here. Everything is here. This is my house now. Uh, so, I'm not really thinking about it. 
I will have to start thinking about it in a couple months, depending on what happens here and if things get worse because um, of healthcare and that kind of thing. I mean, I guess I prefer LA over Toronto at the moment, but I still like Toronto and I love Canada. Uh, it's a hard question to answer, I guess, because I can't even get specific. It's just there's something kind of nice about moving places. And I did it before when I moved to Vancouver. And this is even more different because I have people that I know in Los Angeles, like a lot of people, as many people as I know in Toronto. So it doesn't feel really all that strange. And when I think about my life here, I'm pretty much doing the exact same thing. Like nothing's really changed other than the environment. So, oh, got a phone call coming here. Tell us more about the cookbook. The concept of repurposing is awesome. Uh, well, that's pretty much it. I mean, Uh, yeah, I guess some of you already heard that in the book, there is ways to repurpose leftovers from recipes in the book. Not every single recipe, but a lot of them. Uh, it's still like comfort food based recipes. There are some easier things in it. I tried to keep it a little more, I think like the word that publishing uses is like every day, but I don't want to use that word to describe it. So I have to think of another word. I think easy is misleading, although there are easier recipes in this book for sure. It's not like you know, this like, I think there's still epic recipes in it, but it isn't like vegan comfort classics where it's like one after the other that are a little more labor intensive. Um, other than that, like, I don't really know. I'm waiting to get the first draft of my manuscript back. Um, and that's all delayed because of what's going on. Uh, so that's like really all I can say. The photos are sick. Uh, I'm really excited for the photography. I mean, that's, that's pretty much all I can say right now. I'm trying to think of like, can I tell you about any recipes? Well, this jalapeno ranch will be in the book. It's like a perfected version from the one on the blog. The leaf blower is still out there. Like what the hell? Okay, this is from Claire Spear. Any relationship advice in terms of looking? They've always just happened in the past, but I've been single for a while now and I'm honestly getting bored. Do you recommend online dating like Bumble or just trust that they'll come at the right time? I think it's a little of both. I don't think there's anything wrong with going on a dating site and just having fun and just like approaching it from a light place. Don't approach it from a place of like, you're desperately hoping to meet the love of your life that way. I think, again, it's all about the energy you put out is what you receive back. And so I've had experience with all kinds of things like this. Um, and I have a lot of friends who have met the like love of their life on a dating site. So it can happen, but again, it has to, again, I do think it is a matter of like trusting the timing and trusting the universe and also getting yourself in the right place in order to attract the right thing. So treat it like that and treat it like a bit of a game, not like a game, like a dating game, but just like a game for yourself or a game of your energetics. Like pay attention to who you're attracting and what you're attracting and then look at that as a reflection of you and like really look at it from a new approach maybe if you haven't already because that's how I started looking at it once I started getting kind of sick of the whole idea of online dating and then when I did that it was kind of a more interesting introspective experience you learn a lot so it's fine make mistakes whatever but uh, do what feels right don't force yourself to do bumble if that's not what you want to do but if you feel like you want to then go ahead I mean I just remember you waste so much time going like this and it's like crazy how much time you spent doing that but I definitely had fun for a little bit on there. That plant love. How are you and Snickles staying sane through everything? I'm in a little bit of a unique position because truthfully, this self-isolation isn't that much different from my regular life. Um, I'm also very comfortable being alone and not socializing and just doing my own thing. I understand that that isn't the case for a lot of people and trying to adjust to working from home if that's what you're doing can be very difficult uh, but in my case personally it's almost like I've been preparing for this my whole life in a way I know how to do it I'm good at it I'm getting a lot done um, I also recognize there are bigger problems out there, but I'm just speaking to my particular situation. And so it's quite shit for a lot of people right now. And uh, I'm just trying to remember that. 
that I live in this little tiny bubble and it's a bubble of privilege and it's a bubble of ignorance in a way too because I don't know it's really bad out there right now for a lot of people um and some people in my life too they've had to shut down their brick and mortar businesses they've had to you know they don't have income coming in so this is only going to get worse uh we're going into a recession and they're calling it potentially another great depression so i really have no idea what's going to happen doesn't mean my situation is going to remain this way uh you know for the foreseeable future so i'm just trying to be appreciative of what is going on for me at the moment trying to keep the bigger picture in perspective and trying not to get overwhelmed by those details and those negative details about this crisis that I'm referring to because you can just think about it all day long and become overwhelmed and have a breakdown about it and I think it's okay to feel everything you need to feel but um just I don't know just try to be mindful of how much energy you're giving certain things I think at this time because everything's quite heightened Cynicals is fine. He doesn't give a shit what's going on. This is his regular life also. I mean, what it would be like to be a cat right now would be great. Someone just said, skin care. <laughs> There's like that meme going around that's like, for all the people that asked about my skin care, and it's like, no one. I never really talk about my skin care. Uh, I have, though, in the past mentioned that I use province apothecary products which uh, is my friend's business and actually right now she's doing online orders only so she would love the support so if you're in a position to purchase some high-end organic vegan skincare province apothecary is what I use and I love it and I use it religiously um, it's all oil based so like an oil based cleanser oil based serums all that kind of stuff uh, all natural and organic and vegan and cruelty free. So I'll link it below and you can check it out. It's available in all of North America. And that's pretty much it. She's even got like an oat seaweed kind of clay exfoliator that I use all the time. Love that stuff. Uh oh, kind of out there from Meg's Mick 1984. Kind of out there, but do you believe in the multiple dimension theory? Yes, I do. Um, I kind of believe in all theories because who knows the answer. But multiple dimension theory sounds pretty legitimate in my mind. <laughs> or perhaps I just like the idea of the fact that right now in another dimension and right now in another dimension in another dimension, something similar but slightly different is going on like this. I also have to say that I think that I talk a lot about multiple dimensions, like with people in my life. The idea just seems like it would be real. Like given the entire galaxy, this infinite galaxy, I mean, of course it could be possible. Anything's possible. I don't really know how to go more in depth into that. I also believe in aliens, which I've talked about before. But again, I think it's this like, I like the idea of that being the truth. I just am open to all of these ideas of what could be possibly going on on this godforsaken place. Like, I'm open to hearing any theory. And I'm pretty into, like, all that out there stuff. So, the crazier, the weirder, probably the more I believe it. <laughs> uh, Hansi, hello, said, How to mend a broken heart, how to get over someone. Well... Also, you're experiencing a breakup just from January. So that's still pretty fresh. I wouldn't be too hard on yourself about getting over it or mending it because January is pretty recently. So you're definitely in the thick of that grief. I mean, that's really what it is, is it's deep grief for something that once was. And I've experienced that and it is like a death. It's just the same. And you don't know how to really like function because you realize I functioned one way for so long and sort of like, being preoccupied with someone else's energy and then that's gone and then you're like oh i gotta look at myself oh f <laughs> i took that opportunity last time it happened to look at myself obviously and spend time with myself and feel all the things that i was feeling and try to not rush the getting over it part mm, that's really all you can do i think one of the big things i did and i've talked about it before but i'll mention it again is that once I got to a place where I could see, you know, 
what I could be thankful for about that person being in my life, then I was able to process that and focus on that and actually see how much I gained from it personally that had really nothing to do with all of the BS that went on um, and triggering and all of that. It was just like, what? how can I appreciate this person for what they allowed me to see in myself and brought into my life and all these things. And so I wrote a letter and a couple of times I did this, you know, saying all of these things in a, in a letter that I didn't send, it was just in my journal. You don't need to send these letters. It's just the act of doing it and the energy behind that is that what's important in that release. You can even do it and then burn it as more of like a ceremony or a ritual. And then it's kind of like out there and gone, <clears throat> almost like a reset. So I found that to be one of the helpful tools. I also think if you can work with a coach or a therapist, uh, that might not be possible for everybody. There's also a lot of like online therapy things where you can like anonymously, anonymously speak to a therapist and it's like a cheaper option. But like just something, cause I think sometimes talking about it with friends isn't always helpful. Uh, and talking about it to someone neutral is, can be a lot easier to kind of, I don't know, just look at things objectively. So those are the main things. Uh, it just also just takes time, which is what everyone says. Like it really does take time and you can't rush it. I mean, there's still moments like now, like it doesn't also go away. Like you have to remember that depending on how close you were with this person and how long you were together, they're going to be part of your life in some way, like via this energetic tether that you have to work diligently at cutting and sniffing away. And even still, it will still linger to a degree. I don't think it really ever goes away fully because like, just think about how it's like, everyone you've come into contact with is somehow a part of your life in some way. And that's always gonna be the case. Uh, you don't wanna dwell in the past. You wanna look forward and be excited about the future. But you just notice that in your psyche, it pops up a lot and so that still happens to me and so that should be something that you are forgiving about and that you understand that they're just always going to be there in some way they're going to occupy some part of your memory they're going to occupy some part of your present in some way they're going to be part of how you react to someone new that you are with and that's just how it works so hopefully that helps someone said magda said this is actually from almost a year ago I envy the way you talk to people, even strangers. How do you do it? I'm always so awkward and regret everything I say. I am still so awkward around my boyfriend's family, even though we've been together for six years. Well, I don't know the answer to that question other than yes, I think I am good at talking to people. I obviously made a living out of it. Interviewing people. Mm, I have sort of a natural innate curiosity. So that definitely is the reason why because no matter what there's always something I want to know I think that's something you can build is curiosity I think you know if you can somehow get yourself in a curious state of mind when you're interacting with people I mean it's very natural for me to think of a million questions I know that's not the case for everybody but that's really what it is is that I just am fascinated by people and what they're doing and how they're being and all that stuff. So I feel like that's just where I come from is like asking questions. So, and I guess maybe that's how I approach all kind of conversation is like, I don't really ever want to talk about myself. I know that's like, seems the opposite since I'm on a YouTube channel where I basically talk about myself, but like, I really don't. And in my normal life, I try to divert the conversation away from me. Like, I don't want to talk about me. I want to know more about what you're doing or what's going on or how this feels, blah, blah, blah. So I think sometimes conversation can be awkward when, I mean, I, there's a lot of factors at play here. I get shyness is a thing. I used to be really shy, that's the other thing. Um, but I think that was just a big concern over like how people perceive me and caring too much what people thought about me. I think that's where shyness comes from. I think obviously you can get over it, I did. Not everybody can, but like I did. And I think I just said I wasn't really shy. It was just that I cared too much what people think. And once I started to forget about that, um, obviously this took a lot of time, then it was much easier to just be myself and be in who I was. 
I think when it comes to your boyfriend's family, again, just like get curious. There's probably so much you don't know about them. So, you know, ask those questions. And it could be, again, I find too, other people, when you ask questions, like they, they might feel awkward about opening up or answering questions, but they eventually get used to it the more you stay curious. You know, because people, a lot of people don't like talking about themselves, but if you listen and find interest, they actually might feel good in that they're being heard and listened to, right? In a new way by, by someone in their life that they actually care about or love. So anyway, something to try and think about. Someone asked about tarot cards. Do I use them? And that you want to see a video how I use them and stuff. I do use tarot cards. I have a tarot deck and I pull them from time to time. Or maybe I'll show you in another video, but a good account to follow. Wild Soul Healing. Tarot for the Wild Soul. She has a podcast, Lindsay Mack. Mm, but she usually posts like different tarot spreads you can do. So if you're into it and you have a deck, go follow that account, Wild Soul Healing. And uh, sometimes I do the spreads, the tarot spreads that she suggests there. Usually they're around like the moons and the different things going on. Yeah. Okay, I think that's a good watch me eat tots because I have three tots left. And I think I've answered enough questions for today. So stay the hell home. I haven't been out to the grocery store in over a week and a half and I don't plan on going anytime soon. Of course you're allowed to go to the grocery store, but be safe, keep your distance from people. And uh, I hope you're all doing well. You can leave more questions below cause I'm sure we'll have plenty of time to do this again and I'll be back soon. Okay, bye y'all.